Hey, welcome back to the Big Ranch Show. Thank you for joining me. In this episode, we will have part three of our Project 2025 series. And it's going to have to do with a small piece out of Chapter 21, The Department of Commerce by Thomas Gilman, or Gilman. Um, as you see, I was just giving you this to show you the name of the chapter and where you can find it, Chapter 21. As I've mentioned before, sometimes the page numbers have been getting changed around so you can't find them. Don't let them gaslight you. They're still there. Chapter 21, Department of Commerce. As it is right now, this is from page 664, I believe. 664 of the 922-page document. But they want to get rid of the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. They're saying it should be dismantled and many of its functions eliminated or sent to other agencies, privatized, or placed under the control of the states and territories. Could you imagine how bad that could go? Especially, they say they privatize it. Now, we've already seen some privatization within our National Weather Service of how AccuWeather has a lot of access to stuff that make us pay for things that would have should have been free because taxpayers have already paid for it. <laughs> Now, that has gone okay, but it's been terrible because a lot of stuff that would be helpful to people like myself who live in the state of Oklahoma has gone behind paywalls. And paywalls are not helpful if you're poor. But could you imagine privatizing the National Weather Service and, National, and the NOAA? Because the National Weather Service is part of NOAA. And that's one thing that they're not going to tell you right here. Now, could you imagine it's privatized by a company that sells, I don't know, umbrellas? Would it not behoove them to keep telling you it's going to rain even when it's not, just so you have you'll buy an umbrella? Yeah, that that's a possibility, right? So privatization is a terrible thing to do when it comes to our weather. Also, it goes on to say that it wants to possibly put it in control of the states and territories. Could you imagine? Just imagine what happens when the states are controlling that, depending on who's in office in those states. Like right now, the state government of Florida is completely ignoring the fact that there is climate change and problems facing their state. There are, there are places in Florida where it floods more than it used to. And they're losing shoreline because of it, right? These are these are facts. These are things that actually can be seen. These are observable scientific facts. But just imagine somebody like Ron DeSantis wanting to hold on to power right before an election. And there's a massive Category Four, Category Five hurricane headed to Florida. And since it's under the control of the state, the governor of the state can tell the, the, the state's operator of weather, as it were, that to, to, to hush it, to keep it quiet, in order to not affect his political aspirations. That's what could happen. Right now, we have a hurricane heading to um, Louisiana as we speak. And what what would what would happen there if the the governor was an idiot, right? And wanted to act as if no, there's no threat, everything's fine, everything's perfectly normal. People want to will ask you what would have asked me in the past. Do you really think a governor or a state government would do that? Yes, I've seen it. Just back in 2021, the state of Texas acted as if that record-breaking blizzard freeze, whatever the hell it was, that came across the country and destroyed Texas for months and left people without power for weeks. The state government tried to act like that was just perfectly normal. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Just keep, keep going. 
We saw it with the President of the United States back when Trump was president using a Sharpie to change the direction of a hurricane because he lied and said it was going somewhere it wasn't. So yes, I believe very wholeheartedly that a state governor and state government would do this. And I'm not just talking conservative states. I'm talking Republican states, Democratic-led states. I don't trust a politician to tell me my weather. I live in Oklahoma. If I trusted a politician instead of Mike Morgan, I would probably die. Mike Morgan being one of the best weathermen in the state of Oklahoma and probably one of the best active weathermen in the country. He's a great meteorologist. But those are the people you want running the NOAA and the National Weather Service. You want scientists. You want people that have educations in weather. You don't want a politician being able to tell you when and where there's a tornado coming. The National Weather Service is a vital instrument to this country. And it shouldn't be privatized. It shouldn't be put in control of the states. We need a cohesive unit putting out a cohesive message about what's going on. We don't need the governor of Louisiana saying, oh, it's a Category 2 storm, when the governor of Mississippi says, oh, it's a Category you know, 1 storm or Tropical Storm. A tropical storm or something, right? We need cohesiveness. And I, as someone who loves to track weather, I would never give people, I would never tell people what's coming unless I heard it from the National Weather Service first. And I don't want that to happen for anybody else. Tropical storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, they're all terrible events that happen to us here in this country. And they happen across, around the globe, and they're getting stronger. Why? Because of climate change. And the people on the right, on the far right, especially the ones writing Project 2025, have a vested interest in you not caring about climate change. Because it makes them more money. The more they can destroy the earth, the more money they make. If I read earlier, Mr. Gil Gilman, that wrote this section, used to be the former CEO of Chrysler. It's, we see how that went. But at the end of the day, we don't need people telling us the weather that don't know what they're talking about. At least most weathermen, even the ones, even the, even the weather people that aren't meteorologists that you sometimes see on TV. They at least get their information from the National Weather Service. And further privatization of the National Weather Service would be detrimental not only to the workers of the National Weather Service and NOAA, but it would be detrimental to the American public and put the American public at risk of not getting the information they need at the, in the amount of time they need it. In fact, I believe there needs to be an expansion of things that the weather, National Weather Service can do. And I believe there needs to be an expansion of funding to states that are prone to have tornadoes. To ensure that tornado sirens and tornado radars are all up to date. Right? We had an incident here in Oklahoma where the tornado warning sirens didn't go off at all this last spring in one, one city. And people got hurt by this. So honestly, this is something that shouldn't happen. This is another reason why I believe Project 2025 is nothing but a terrible policy idea. And like I said, don't trust don't don't trust me for this. Like I've told, like I've mentioned in the other two episodes of this series, don't take my word for it. Go to the website, read the read the thing. This one happens to be in Chapter 21 under the Department of Commerce. Anyways, thank you for um, sticking with me through Part 3 of the series. 
Um, I plan to have another series, another part of the series out. I plan to at least get five episodes out of it. I had planned three, but obviously because of how I'm doing it and the fact that I may be coming down with something, I don't think I'll be getting another one done this week. But, and so I'm going to cut this a little short. But anyway, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you down the road.